Fostering democracy. Call Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Well, here we go again. And it is a little, a little bit like... Sometimes it seems a little bit like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? And here when we find ourselves addressing legislation for the umpteenth time because it was incorrectly passed in the first instance or it was fundamentally flawed because it was rushed through, rammed through, because the government of the day had a view, had a majority, and simply ignored or did not allow a full and proper process to take its path, which might have seen some of these wrinkles ironed out along the way. Part two, again, Mr Chairman, reinforces the value of a select committee process, and no, no less than part one did. And I'm still a little disappointed, I will remain a little disappointed that I still have not had answers to the questions that I put regarding part one satisfactory answers from the government, so let's hopefully here at part two we might get some engagement from the government, particularly bearing in mind that we're wanting to support this legislation because whilst we may argue that it's been done poorly, done, the process has been flawed, it's not democratic, um, we are here and this will help Auckland in their current bind and the Auckland City Council in the very least, which is made up of duly elected people, supports the legislation. So again, if I was to look at part two, I recognise a couple of things, Mr Chair. We have a new part two to the primary legislation. There was no part two. The new part two consists of sections 170 and 171, which seek to validate certain things that were done before the enactment of this bill, which we are processing now validates the closing dates of submissions, validates any hearing session of the hearings panel that was held concurrently with another session by providing that, that the provisions of the Principal Act as amended here must be treated as having applied in relation to the hearing session and the chairperson of the hearings panel must be treated as having made the necessary directions under these provisions except that, Mr Chairman, the chairperson didn't, and the hearings weren't in compliance with the legislation of the day. Section 170 deals with the closing dates for submissions to councils on the proposed plan. It talks about despite section 127, 7 and 9, the 28th of February 2014 must be treated as if it is and always was the closing date for submissions as opposed to the 14th of January 2014, except that it wasn't. Well, once again, we have fundamentally flawed legislation despite 16 attempts by the government to patch up its dodgy legislation, primary legislation, we still have flaws here, we still have problems here, and here we are in urgency seeking to validate actions that were illegal. Seeking to say things that happened were legal when they were not. Fundamentally bad lawmaking, fundamentally bad process. Go to 171. Concurrent hearing sessions held before the, two, uh, before the 2015, oh, sorry, 215 amendments, and what am I looking at? In my note says, Ron, go and have a look at the bill. <laughs> Telling myself, the provisions of the Act, on, where are we? 170, sorry, scrambling back through, checking my notes again. Here we go. The hearing session, concurrent hearing sessions held before the 2015 amendments applies to any hearing sessions that were held concurrently with the other hearing sessions before the commencement of the Local Government Act. Uh, the hearing session must be treated as if the Act as amended in 2015 applied in relation to the hearing. The hearing session was held in accordance with the direction given under section 165, chairperson appointed under 165, amended. The hearing was chaired by a member of the other, it goes on and on. Except that what this clause raises is a series of questions as to the situation that arose, the issues behind those situations, and the reasons for adding part two and these two new sections, 170 and 171. And that again reinforces, Mr Chairman, the value of select committees. If this bill had gone to select committee, we would have had the opportunity to look at these two sections and ask the Auckland City Council what happened. 
We have had no such opportunity. The questions we might have asked is that, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, 